Weaver Quality Craft, an often overlooked manufacturer on this episode of Toy Train Tips and Tricks. Hello again, this is Mike with another episode of Toy Train Tips and Tricks. Everyone knows about Lionel and MTH and Atlas O, but don't forget about manufacturers of the past like K-Line, Williams, and Weaver. There are many fine products still available in the secondary market from these and other smaller firms. Weaver Quality Craft Models began as a husband and wife operation by Bob Weaver and his wife Shirley in Northumberland, Pennsylvania in 1965. Early products were mainly highly detailed wood and white metal O-scale rolling stock kits intended for two-rail operation. By 1980, Weaver had introduced its first injection molded plastic hopper car kits, again intended for two-rail operators, but Weaver soon recognized a growing market for scale-sized and detailed three-rail trains, often called high-rail, and began making items in three-rail O-gauge as well. In addition to plastic rolling stock, Weaver also produced a line of fine-running plastic locomotives, such as this used and abused Jeep 38-2 model that I'm working on rebuilding, and even some highly detailed imported brass steam locomotives. In 1993, Bob Weaver sold the business to Joe Hader, who continued to expand the product line. By the late 1990s, Weaver offered a complete line of locomotives and rolling stock and ranked with Williams, K-Line, and MTH as major competitors to Lionel. However, as the baby boomer generation aged, the model train market began to shrink in the 2000s, and when Joe Hader announced his retirement in 2015, a buyer was not found for the business, and Weaver Quality Craft Models closed its doors. However, some of Weaver's tooling lived on through other manufacturers, including Atlas O and even Lionel. These Chessy system covered hoppers are typical of Weaver rolling stock production in the 1990s and 2000s. These are scale proportioned models that are intended for O31 and larger curves. The graphics are excellent reproductions of Chessy systems covered hopper decorations. The numbers are even correct for Chessy system covered hoppers, albeit for a somewhat different design. The hoppers were produced at a variety of car numbers, road names, both B&O and C&O Chessy colors, and even car styles, representing both the ACF 4-bay centerflow design and the Pullman standard 3-bay design. The cars were also produced with different details, such as these various roof hatches. While covered hoppers are very common on real railroads, especially in the American Midwest, the selection of available three-rail models has been somewhat limited over the past half-century. The most common covered hoppers for three-rail are Lionel's quad hoppers, which were also copied by Williams and Menards. While these cars do represent an actual prototype, that was an uncommon cement hopper produced only for the Norfolk and Western, and to my eyes, it is not a close enough representation of the grain cars that I want to model. Lionel, MTH, and Al Menards have produced nice-looking two-bay and three-bay covered hoppers in recent years, including the newest Menards versions, but most of these models sell for $50 and up, more than I would like to pay for a freight car. And they do not represent the ACF four-bay hoppers that I prefer to model. That is where these Weaver cars fit in. These covered hoppers are often listed on eBay for $50 or more, but with some patience, you can find bargains. I acquired these four cars, and actually a fifth will arrive soon, over the course of about nine months. On average, I paid about $30 per car, shipping included. A little higher for those that were still new in the box, and a little less for the rest. And considering that Menard's new two-bay covered hoppers retail for $35, I figured that this was a fair price for new-in-the-box four-bay cars. The plastic couplers on these cars are functional, although the springs are somewhat weak, so they lack a pop when they open. Still, a good tug from the neighboring car should be sufficient to open the knuckle when necessary. 
The plastic trucks feature simulated springs and roller bearings, and while they are not metal, their unique self-equalizing design helps them overcome any imperfections in the track. The car decoration features authentic Chessy system markings and sharp, detailed graphics. Even with the plastic underframe and trucks, the cars weigh in just above my targeted weight standard of roughly two-thirds the NMRA recommended weight. Although, since most of the weight is in the upper shell, you may find the need to add a little weight to lower the center of gravity to prevent tipping, depending on your track configuration. Despite their length, these cars will negotiate 031 curbs, but likely not 031 turnouts, as the underframe makes no accommodation for close switch machines. I think 042 is the minimum for these particular cars to look right. But some of Weaver's shorter cars will operate just fine on tighter curbs. As mentioned earlier, these Weaver cars feature several body styles. These two represent the so-called 5250 center flow covered hoppers produced by ACF, or American Car and Foundry, beginning in the mid-1960s, and similar cars are still in production today. Among the options available on the real cars are either round or elongated hatches. Elongated hatches are generally preferred for grain surface, while the round hatches usually handle products such as plastic pellets or cement. But in a pinch, either type could be used in either service. This car represents a Pullman Standard PS2 4740 covered hopper. Built between 1967 and 1972, these cars are slightly smaller forerunners of the similar 4750 cars that became some of the most ubiquitous rail cars ever built for North American railroads. Since covered hoppers in agricultural service spend several months each year parked and empty, they receive maintenance only as necessary. As a result, many cars in the 1980s or even 1970s railroad colors can still occasionally be seen on mainline freight trains today. These cars, however, fit my mid-1970s Queen City lines perfectly. So, if you're looking for a variety of scale-sized rolling stock that is a bit easier on the wallet than current Lionel or MTH models, check out some of the older Weaver Quality Craft offerings. Some designs and some road names may be priced higher or lower than others, but you can often find some really nice models for $20 to $30 if you are patient. As always, I hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And if so, please like the video, share, subscribe, and tell your friends and neighbors. Keep the trains running, look for bargains, and we'll catch you next time on Toy Train Tips and Tricks.